guys, there's another Helping Hands meeting this Friday right after school in Mr. Gomez's room. Probably lasts till about 4.30, so come out and check it out. It's going to be really cool. Hey, SHS, I'm Emma, and this is Melissa, and we're president and president for Key Club. You guys who don't know what Key Club is, it's an organization that drew time and effort to help our community. Being Key Club also gives you community service hours for all your college applications. Dues are $20, and this also includes this year's t-shirt. So turn in your dues to Ms. Johnson in room 221 as soon as possible. So come be a member and go in it. Woo! Hey guys, you remember last year when we used to do birthday announcements on the announcement? See me, Jeremy, or anyone else in video production, or Coach Long, and you have to pay $1 One dollar. One dollar. One dollar. One dollar. To see anybody you want on the announcements. Good staff uh, here to show our latest promotion for uh, fun things for Sonoma High School in the Hot Spot Spirit Shop. We have the new Spirit Cup. Now the deal that's going to work with this is real simple. You pay eight dollars for this cup and it's a heavy gauge plastic. Um, it will last for the whole year. You'll pay eight dollars and it sounds like a lot but the deal is you can take it to any event at Sonoma High School, any ball game, and you can get a one dollar refill. Also, on top of that, you can bring it back to the Hot Spot Spirit Shop and you can get a $1 refill during the day. That's ice included. And so we have the drinks purchased to be able to come in and serve your refreshment needs here at Sonorwa High School. We hope you enjoy this. We have a limited number, so you need to come down during uh, lunch today and ask about these. Our staff will be on hand to help you during lunch shifts today. Thank you. Go Phoenix. Hi, my name is Lydia Hanson. I'm the ninth grade class president. We need your help to get this homecoming float put together. We need money donations, supply donations, your ideas to get this all put together, and volunteers. If you have any great ideas or money donations or anything that we can use, please contact me, Taylor Mosteller, Heather Ortiz, or Miss Bowen. We cannot tell you how greatly appreciative we are about this. Thank you so much. Hey guys, I'm Katie Shaw, president of the sophomore class. We need your donations to help for the homecoming float. And we need supplies so we, as sophomores, can win the homecoming float competition once more. Hey guys, it's Miranda Northrup, the junior class president. And I just wanted to tell you guys that homecoming week's coming up, and we need donations for the float. And if you have any donations or have any questions about the float and anything about homecoming week, see me or one of the other officers and we will be glad to help. Attention seniors, this is Caitlin Gash, your senior class representative. I was just going to remind you that during homeroom, the rest of the week and next week, we are going to become collecting money for homecoming and we need as much money as possible to make the homecoming float good this year. So go Phoenix!
Mates, picture retakes will be on September 6th in case you did not get your picture taken, alright mate? Come join us for the Friday Dancing Frenzy! On the Funky 400 house! Get your grab on! Alright, this is how you do the sprinkler, Miss Chance. Are you ready? We're getting I'm our ready. grab on up here in the Funky 400 hall. Miss Chance, put your hand on your hip. Ready? ready? Go! To no music, baby. Woo! Season two of the college football picks. I'm on here with my buddy, the kicker Matt Edgar, and the quarterback Tyler Harris. And here we go. Game one, Tulsa at number one Oklahoma. Tyler, how's this one going to go down? Well, I'm looking at that Oklahoma's going. They're ranked number one. People, come on. They got a returning quarterback in Landry Jones. Uh, they got, I think, it's a junior running back who's going to step up and take the place of uh, Marco Murray. Marco Murray, whatever. So I'm giving it to Oklahoma all the way. All right, man. So this is a no-brainer, like Tyler said. Uh, you're number one ranked team in the nation against an uh, unranked, uh, not BCS bowl team. Um, give it to Oklahoma all the way. I'm going with Tulsa. I'm just kidding, guys. Oklahoma's going to murder them. Game number two, Louisiana Monroe at number six, Florida State. Tyler. <sighs> Florida State, they lost their starting quarterback, Christian Ponder. But uh, they got B.J. Manuel. Yep. And he's a hoss, folks. And I'm going Florida State. All right, man. Once again, I'm going to agree with Tyler. This is a no-brainer. Uh, Florida State, top-ranked team in the uh, country. Very good football team in the ACC. And then going up against uh, Louisiana Monroe, they just don't stand a chance. So I'm going Florida State. Yeah, it was pretty well, they, Are they in the Sun Belt? Sun Belt, like yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. Florida State, it's at FSU. No way. Louisiana Monroe comes in there and gets it done against Florida State. No way. Game number three, Maryland at Miami. Miami's got eight suspended players, you know. It's going to be tough for Miami to pull one out, even though it's a home game. Tyler, how do you see it going down? Um, I'm going with Maryland. They'll have it. Miami don't have their starting quarterback receivers or the, both their starting middle linebackers, so Maryland. 
Before the suspensions, I was getting to Miami. Uh, Jacoby Harris had a great spring, and he's been uh, progressing over the summer with a new head coach. But uh, after all the suspensions, you know, Tyler said missing wideouts, missing middle linebackers, and your uh, senior cornerback coming back, and uh, just doesn't look good for Miami. So I'm gonna give it to the Terps up in Maryland. Well, I don't give these guys going to Maryland. Miami still got Jacoby Harris starting. You're out. No, he's, he's out. out. He's, he's out, out too. Out. Oh, heck with it. Maryland wins. I thought he was starting. Never mind. Game number four, number five, Boise State, at number 19, Georgia. Probably the most anticipated <coughs> game of the week. Let's see how it goes now. It's going to be tough. Boise State's got their starting quarterback back, Kellen Moore. He's a senior this year. He's been through it. He wants to go to a national championship. But Georgia still has Aaron Murray. No brainer. Georgia, SEC, baby. I like boys in this matchup. Even though Georgia is an SEC team and Aaron Murray is an amazing quarterback, they lose an off, ox, explosive offensive punch in A.J. Green. And they also they have questionable question marks at a running back with uh, both Caleb King and Rashawn Ely not playing this year. And you say you may have a freshman starting up trying to uh, haul the offense down. So I'm going to have to give it to Boise State. Well, well, you, do have, you, yeah. you do have to take into consideration they don't have either of their starting receivers last exactly. right year. And, you know, I've always said this, and I'm always going to be like this. Boise State <coughs> plays in the WAC. Do you remember what the score was last time Georgia played a team from the WAC? I do believe it was 41 to 10 against Hawaii when uh, Colt Brennan was the quarterback, number one, one of the number one quarterbacks in the nation. I say Isaiah Crowell will be live up to his hype. Aaron Murray throws for 250 yards. Receivers will catch the ball. Defense is a little iffy, but Georgia gets the job done in the SEC. Game number oh. five, number three Oregon. And number four LSU in Death Valley. Tyler, what's going to happen? Um, you know, in this past this past couple of weeks and everything, you've been hearing stuff about Jordan Jefferson and their uh, uh, backup middle linebacker that got arrested for that fight or whatever. Um, they're still a good team. They've got good veterans on defense, but it's just it's going to be a tough one. I'm going. It's going to be a draw for me. I don't know who's going to win. All right, Matt. Well, as everyone always says, SEC is the most dominant powerhouse in all the college football, which is very true. But without their starting quarterback, I don't know how well they can play. Yes, their defense is still amazing, and their offense still is packed to full SEC punch. I would like to take Oregon. Oregon has a high explosive hurry up offense. Their defense isn't amazing, but it's sound enough to hold down uh, without Jordan Severson. So I'm liking Oregon in this matchup. Oregon's the closest thing that can come to LSU speed. It's going to be a speed game. You know, Jordan Jefferson's out, but Zach Mettenberger transferred to LSU this past season, used to play at Georgia, got suspended on some misdemeanors, but supposedly has a stronger arm than Jefferson. He does not have starting game experience, but I believe it will be all right. Well, speaking of starting game experience, yeah. they, they are starting Jared Lee, which has started in the past three years. Exactly. And is not bad backup. So if it's, you see Jared Lee gets hurt, he's got that. Mettenberger is coming up. Defensively, LSU's a lot stronger than Oregon. Oregon has a Michael James and a tough QB. Yeah. They gave Auburn a run for their money last year, but I'm taking LSU in the three-point field goal game. And guys, I know y'all play football, so I'm asking y'all what can we expect to get tomorrow on Friday. Uh, we're getting a W all the way. Tyler's going to lead us to victory. Right. Him and his offensive line and our running backs, so defense is going to have a great game too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm expecting 35 nothing over the Mountain Blue Devils. We'll take that. Well, I'm, I'm going to go even higher than that. GC can score 52 points. Oh, let's make it 60. <laughs> hey there, Phoenix Nation. As you know, we got a game today. You should come. It's our first home game, so be there to support us. 7.30 against Marvel. Let's do it.